Hello, Christopher Brent here coming to you today with a musical podcast on performance anxiety and specifically musicians who are dealing with performance anxiety and how to go about handling the issue. This is a big issue for a lot of musicians and it can sometimes be crippling really for the careers of musicians and it can be tough. That's what I'll say first and foremost. We've all dealt with it at times in our lives as musicians and sometimes it can come out of nowhere and get you, you know, so you want to be prepared to handle it and there are ways to handle it and sometimes you can take that negative and turn it into a really big positive. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, I started thinking about this the other day. The college football national championship was on. And here are kids who are 18, 19, 20 years old, probably 21 at the most, at the oldest. Um, And obviously a very big stage. And the president is there. President Trump is walking on the field and everything. And I'm just sitting here thinking, man, how nervous are these kids right now (laughs) for this national championship game that's broadcast not only nationally here but throughout the world. And here's the president in this unbelievable stage, you know. And it turned out to be a great game and really... Nobody seemed uh, nervous in the game. I know the Alabama quarterback didn't have a good first half. um, But, you know, for the most part, I mean, these athletes were right on. and It was really a legendary game. Um, But the point I'm trying to make is that these players took that adrenaline and they used it for the positive. And that's what you have to do if you let that adrenaline turn into a negative the fear can overcome you um, even if you are really prepared for a performance so what you have to do and this is what I've done in my experience as a musician uh, playing in many different settings as a classical musician both as a soloist and an accompanist and playing with jazz groups and doing things in an improvisational setting Uh, There's all kinds of feelings that can come upon you, especially if you're obviously a nervous or sentimental kind of musician who can be um, just overtaken sometimes with these these, um, sensibilities or these, these fears. You can sometimes get ready for a performance, you're backstage, and then you find out, yeah, the president's here, or <laughs> maybe that old teacher you had from years ago that makes you nervous. That one person is in the audience that makes you nervous. That's the hardest thing. You know, if you get fixated on what that person thinks of you, that's a sense of fear right there, and you can't let that happen. Um, so the the key is is to, if, you, if you're having some struggles, um, is to obviously, you know, you, you got to practice and go through your, your preparation and there's um, a lot of different things that you can do as far as learning a work and going over it many times through with repetition. And maybe if you're playing the piano, if you're looking at this from the perspective of a pianist, you know, memorize the hands separately, play it at different uh, tempos, do all these things to obviously get yourself in a, in a good state of preparation so you feel confident the more prepared you are the more confident you will be right but even with that preparation if you still have that sense of fear you know a good approach to this would be to take all that adrenaline and try to turn it into a positive one thing that you can do almost as a meditational practice is to go through what it feels like to play well in your mind if you know that feeling of what it feels like to play the phrase as well you want to go over that in your mind many times that always seems to help me and to say that you have something to say as a musician and to have an individual sensibility to deliver to the audience and know what that is and stick with that that's another thing that you can use to turn this adrenaline into a positive. And what I mean by that is, let's say 
you are the type of performer who's maybe not a technical perfectionist, but you are more of a emotional, romantic kind of uh, performer. Uh, and let's say that's your message that you want to deliver. You got to know that and stick with it and let that be your motto, right? And then that way, if someone says, oh, that wasn't technically perfect, you don't ha you don't care, right? Because that's not your motto. That's not your point. Your point is to deliver that romantic, sappy, kind of almost exaggerated kind of performance. And there are classical pianists who are known for that kind of thing, right? And that's their motto. That's what they want to deliver. And that's what they do. And I love a lot of those performers. So, uh, so maybe you are the other way around. Maybe you want to be a perfectionist and kind of deliver more of a technical, solid performance. And that's your thing. And maybe you have somebody that might criticize you because it's not emotional enough, right? But who cares, right? That's not your motto. That's not what you're trying to deliver. So when you have your message and it's very clear musically what you want to do, you have a positive and you no longer care what that one person thinks, right? That one person who makes you nervous because you've got something to say and you're going to say it well and you're going to, you're going to do it well. And then now you've got a sense of what it feels like to play the phrases really well in your mind and you know what your motto is, right? And if you write these things down and you get very specific, uh, sometimes I've gone through a whole program, a recital program in my mind that I've performed and I've written down specific things that I know I want to deliver to the audience and I've um, gone over them and prepared myself to do that and I have a goal in mind now. Now I'm working towards a direction, a musical direction, and if somebody thinks that's not the right way to go about it, well, that's their problem, you know. Now I have a sense of confidence. Now I'm delivering something and I'm taking that adrenaline of, oh my gosh, I hope I just get through the the piece, you know. I'm taking that fear and putting it aside and saying, I know this piece I know what it feels like to play it well, and I'm going to play it in a romantic, exaggerated, uh, kind of <laughs> uh, maybe bombastic way. You know, uh, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to take that approach as opposed to trying to be just this perfectionist, right? Um, and I feel like that really helps me. Now I've got a message, and if you don't like it, I don't care. Right, I've got the message, I'm going to deliver it, and that's my statement. And now I'm in a completely different psychological zone. You know. Um, so, with that being said, to perform, and perform well, you do have to be prepared. You have to know the notes, right? So, you got to practice. Okay, so, when you combine all of these psychological things with practice over a usually a period of months and months and months, sometimes maybe even longer than that, into years and years, right? Um, you're going to become more confident. So you got to take that adrenaline and turn it into a solid positive, right? And when you feel positive, you can feel like you can deliver a strong message to the audience, right? And you'll feel like a little kid again that just fell in love with music and is playing the air guitar <laughs> and dancing around, right? Um, and that, that that feeling of super confidence like you're a kid again and uh, so free of negativity and free of fear is just the best feeling and that's where you want to be, right? Um, sometimes as musicians, you know, especially studying at the collegiate level and the professional level, you can get really, really caught up in what people think of you especially your teachers and your professors, right? Um, but you have to understand what music is to you personally and how you perceive it and what type of performer you want to be. There are different types of performers, right? If you take classical pianists, um, Vladimir Horowitz is a very different kind of pianist than, let's say, um, um, a Polini, maybe, um, or Alfred Brendel. Alfred Brendel and Vladimir Horowitz are not even in the same boat. Uh, they're both extremely good pianists. Um, Alfred Brendel is kind of known for a very solid, scholarly, uh, maybe conservative performance. 
Um, not to say that uh, Horowitz's performances aren't scholarly. Um, he's a risk taker. Uh, he's a, a romantic pianist, maybe the last of the great romantic pianists, as he's often uh, talked about. Um, very different style. So I was one who maybe clinged more towards a Horowitz type of performance uh, growing up. So I wanted to deliver that kind of message. And let's say there was some person who didn't like, you know, what I did. And it wasn't scholarly and this and that. It wasn't the right uh, ornaments or articulation or something like that. I didn't care, right? Not to say I don't take that seriously. I do, right? But um, I wanted to deliver that romantic message, right? And when you have a motto and a message and a style that you are going to deliver, it will... Um, really help you with your confidence, right? You now have a purpose as a performer, and you definitely need that purpose. Uh, if you lose that sense of purpose, the fear can really creep in, and um, that can be tough, you know? It would be a bad spot to be in, uh, but if you've had a bad performance recently, um, you can uh, climb out of it, even the best musicians in the world have had bad performances and uh, you put all these thoughts together work hard practice and pull yourself together and make it happen again um, it's it's what uh, good musicians do so if you have questions please email me at chrisbrentmusic at gmail.com uh, subscribe to my youtube channel and visit my website at www.christopherbrent.com thank you so much and have a wonderful day